Oh, do you know what I fancy? A nice cup of tea. Like a nice cup of tea. In the morning, the day will soon. I like a nice cup of tea with my dinner. And a nice cup of tea with my tea. Tea. Oh, that was a nice cup of tea by Billy Hale. I love that song. My name is Ellie Ingram. Welcome to the English Muffin. And I bet you're wondering, what on earth has she got in store today? Well, before we get started, camera number two, are you there? Of course you are. We wanted to get you involved from the beginning because today, you, you and me, we're having a tea party! Oh my God, I'm so excited. I am making a traditional English cream tea and you know what that involves scones jam clotted cream but first things first we've got to get the tea on and i bet you're thinking what she got hidden under here well i'm about to show you cue sexy music standing strong we don't want to get rid of it we want to keep it in the family we're in the tea bag i must say in this house we love tea but today we're going to go for the el Grelle. when i say i love tea it's not a joke okay i just want to let you know how serious it is i am part of the tea tribe okay look at this can you see tea tribe that's dedication that is that's a teacup look it's like this teacup. That teacup is on me, okay? Dedication to the tea tribe. It's a serious thing. I love tea, all sorts of tea. Lady Grey tea, English breakfast tea, Darjeeling, Ceylon. Oh, that really strange one, Lapsang Souchon. That tea, have you ever had that tea? That's an intense tea. But anyway, Earl Grey tea, two people, two tea bags, some nice hot water. The tea is brewing. Oh, do you know what? The smell of Earl Grey is just like a warm hug. I just love it. And if you have a tea cozy, pop it back on and the tea is brewing. We're just gonna leave that for a little bit. You want your tea to brew. Do not pour that straight away. Otherwise you're gonna have water. Two minutes later. Ooh, let's see if this tea is ready. I do like a nice, oh, that looks perfect. Oh, and look, my mum still to this day gets milk from our lovely milkman. Mum? Yeah. What's the name of the milkman? Jerry Hallam. Jerry Hallam. Jerry Halliwell. Look at that. That is a lovely cup of tea. Mum, I've got your cup of tea. Here you go, honey. Lovely, isn't it? Perfect. So cute. Thank you very much. That teacup actually matches my dress. What? Is there anything to do with it? Not yet. They're not even started yet. Lovely cup of tea. Mm. Oh, that has wet my appetite. And we are about to get started. First thing we are going to do is make homemade raspberry jam. Right, so let me get everything ready. Bloody hell, that was fast. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. I've not made raspberry jam before. But it's fine because last night, Mary Berry popped around and she showed me how to make it. But what she did tell me to do is put a plate, just a small little plate, in the freezer before you start. Which I have done because we're going to use that a bit later to test that the jam is set. So, let's make some raspberry jam! I have got 575 grams of raspberries. This is really simple, by the way. I'm so excited to make this. All we're going to do is mash up the raspberries. They smell so delicious. Done. You want to see what this looks like? Mashed up? One or two? Who wants to see it? Put your hands up if you want to see my jam. <laughs> I picked number two. Can you see that? Up a bit. Mashed up. Raspberry jam. And now all you need to do is add a little bit of lemon, half a lemon, just squeeze it over, put your fingers over to catch any pips. Don't worry, I'll wash my hands. Right, I need to get this on the hob on a low heat, so you are coming with me. How do I get it off? Just take it off. Take it off, take it off. 
Take it up for me, baby. Oh, okay. let's go. Now we're gonna take our crushed raspberries over to the hob. We just wanna put it on a low heat to start. Just for a couple of minutes, just let the raspberries and the um, lemon just break down, just ever so slowly. Whilst that's just slowly simmering, we're going to weigh out our sugar. So I've got this sugar, it's called preserving sugar. We use 575 grams of raspberries and you just use the same amount of sugar. Whoa, this sugar's like really chunky. Oh my God. Right, look, that's so weird. It's like massive sugar. I hope this is right. There, 575 grams of sugar going into the raspberries. Now that is one hell of a lot of sugar. Keep your heat on low, stir all of that in. And then what you want to do is, you want to just keep the heat on a low to medium heat for a few minutes so you know when all the sugar is dissolved, when you can't feel any more of like the lumps, the granules from the sugar. Oh, look, you can see it's starting to get bubbly, bubbly, bubbly. You want to bring this to a rapid boil for about five to six minutes. So keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the time. Be careful as well, guys, because it's really, really, really hot and you've got sugar and it could spit at you. So just be careful. We're jamming. Whoop chi whoop chi wa wa wa. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my plate out the freezer. There's two minutes left on the clock. Cold plate, cold plate. Plate out the freezer. And what we're gonna do is put a little dollop of jam on there, and you can test it. You can see what did she call it? The ripple test. Right, we're gonna put a little dollop of jam on there. Let's see if this works. A little bit of jam. The ripple test. Let's see if this is ready. No, that looks a bit runny. What oh, tastes nicer? I think these a little bit longer. They did actually say you should put a few plates in the freezer. Now I see why. I was like, I'm not fucking putting five plates in the freezer. I'm gonna put this one back in. Ah, first time for everything. I'm taking my jam vagina. That's had a bit more time. Let's get another little dollop on there. It is really runny. Let's just give it a minute to just. Set. We'll take a moment. Say a little prayer. See, that is a bit better. <laughs> That's fine. It's ready. <laughs> right. You take the jam off the heat, and you have to leave it to cool for about ten minutes before you put it into any of your jars. Oh no! I've got jam on my balloon. Yeah. Oh no! I've got loads on me. Oh no! Oh. Fuck's sake. First of all, let me just say goodbye to camera number two. You're not going. We're just moving you back to where you were. Come on. Over you come. Hello, Gammy, darling. All set up. Let's make some scones. I, for this, do need, just to make sure I remember everything I'm doing, my recipe book. Right, let's go over to the scones. I was thinking, do I say scones or do I say scones? But clearly, I know, noticed, I keep saying scones. A few debates we're going to have, I feel like, when we make these. Scones, scones. Jam or cream first, we're not there yet. But we've discovered, I say scones. Let's make some fruit scones, let's make some fruit scones. That's what we need to do first. We need 350 grams of self-raising flour. In we go. Put the flour in the bowl. You don't need to sift the flour, you can just chuck it in. How good's that? Oh shit, I need to get my butter. Okay, 85 grams of butter. What you wanna do is, you just wanna cut this into little cubes because we're gonna rub it into the flour to make like breadcrumbs. So just put that in there. Also going in there, we want a teaspoon of baking powder. And then you just want a little bit of salt. That goes in. I'm gonna take my rings off because now we're gonna get down and dirty. We want to work this butter into the flour to make breadcrumbs. Now this will take a little while. You just gotta keep rubbing. Look, can you see? Just kind of like this, pushing across to get rid of all of the lumps and create breadcrumbs. That looks good to me. Now what we need to do is, we need 85 grams of caster sugar. Oh no, no. Rewind. So then where I've got 85 grams from, just made it up. Three. In the cutlery drawer. Why? Best keep an elastic band in the cutlery drawer because you never know when you might need one. A really big one is... <laughs> Mum. 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 Mum? You're not answering me. 
what? Because you heard that I caught the caught you with an elastic band in the jaw. Yeah, what's it for? <laughs> okay. Three tablespoons of sugar into your flour mix. Stir that all in. And um, so we need milk. 175 milliliters. Just gonna put it in there. Lemon, make sure you get no pips in there. And then we need a teaspoon. Oh, I can't open it. Got slippery hands. I need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Lovely. Put that off. Sultanas and raisins. Do not forget your sultanas and raisins. I mean, you could forget them and then you'd have plain stones. That's fine. So you're going to bring that together with a knife and then we're going to turn it out onto the worktop. Just put a bit of flour on your worktop. Ooh, I'm so professional with my flower dredger. And then we're gonna get our mix out. <laughs> and you're just gonna bring it all together with your hands. You'll notice it's quite wet, but that's normal. You want to sort of get it um, to be about three to four centimeters thick. Get your cutter, put a little bit of flour on it, get it into your scone and push it down, okay? And then let's make some little mini ones. And then we're gonna go push it down. So next thing we need to do is get these onto a baking tray. There we go, get those all on there. And now what we're gonna do is whisk up an egg to brush over the top of the scones to give them that nice crunchy golden top. And now we are going to get these bad boys into the oven. Right, the scones are in the oven. Our jam has been chilling in the background. I think it's time to have a look. Some bits have actually gone jammy, um, but some bits, aka most of it, is uh, still a bit runny. But that's okay. Maybe we'll put it in the freezer. So my jam is looking a bit more like a Kool-Aid. So I'm gonna put it into the jars and I'm gonna put it into the fridge for a bit to cool down. Now these jars have been sterilized. When you're making jam, you must sterilize your jars. So if you're keeping the jam for a long time, it doesn't go all dodgy in like six months time when you go to open your jam. So these have been washed in soapy water and then they go into the oven in a really low heat for about 10 minutes. And that's how you sterilize your jars. So we're gonna get our jam in. Jam everywhere. Jam all over my lovely potty dress. My potty's booing. Pop your lids on. Mm. Oh, that's confusing. They both fit on the same jar. Oh no, that one doesn't. That must be that one. Oh no. Is it that one? What one is it? Oh, is that right? That's it. Mm -mm. Pop your lids on your jars and then pop your jam into the fridge. Or in my case, the freezer. Oh, oh my God, look. Oh, they've got a lovely golden color on them, just what you want. Oh, okay, so we just need to leave these to cool for about five to 10 minutes. You just want them to cool a little bit so they just start to crisp up. All right. Oh yes, these look perfect. Still nice and warm, but the top is just just got that nice little crunch. But now it's time to check out the jam. Now we know the jam was looking a little bit runny. So we popped into the freezer, hoping and praying that it has set. Let's see. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm not even going to be dramatic on how much it's set, but look at this. <gasps> It's completely set! Oh my god! Whoa! Whoa! Oh my god, I'm so happy! I can make jam. There's literally nothing I can't do. And now it's time to get these scones loaded up. But we are missing one little person who needs to be at this party. Clotted cream! Here is the clotted cream. This is like 
the clotted cream you get everywhere. This is a legit clotted cream. Oh my God, I've not even told you. You know I'm part of the tea tribe, but I actually used to work at a tea room for about six years. So this was me on the reg, serving people cream teas. So I know exactly what is going on here. I know what some of you are thinking. What goes on first? The clotted cream or the jam? You're about to find out. Let's have a look in here. Oh, they've got that lovely crunchy top, but they're still so soft in the middle. Ooh, oh my God, they are perfect. I always go in with clotted cream first. And I do each side of my scone. And then, obviously, I put the jam on next. You saw how I just had to spread that. How are you supposed to spread the cream on top of the jam? It's not possible. Because then you get your jam, your unreal jam that's set, and you can plop it on the top, and then you could just kind of gently spread it. Oh, guys, look. I need to open my own tea rooms, don't I? Look at that. Beautiful. And another thing I do not do is build this beautiful creation and then sandwich them together and then eat it like a sandwich. No! I have it individually. <laughs> Yay! Let's eat scones, let's drink tea, and let's have a tea party! Oh my goodness. Look at this! Guys, thank you so much for coming to my tea party. This is the end of the English Muffin season one, but we will be back. Thank you so much for coming. See you sexy people very soon. Mm. Mm -mm.